Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're a new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. All right, folks, this is a very quick video talking about the types of lines used in typical technical drawing applications. So before we delve into technical drawings and geometric drawings into much more detail, I just thought it would be a good idea to just run through the type of lines I will probably be applying when it comes to going through our technical and geometrical drawing series. So let's go through these lines one at a time. So the first type of line, category A, is what we call the visible edge line or the outline. And this is basically a deep line, okay, which will normally be about five to ten times the width of a what we call a construction line. Right, it's capital B, so we'll talk about that later. And this is basically the firm line to enable a constructed geometric form stand out. So that's basically the final defined line in defining the geometric profile of a given shape or form. So to describe this, we're going to use this diagram over here. So this is basically the outline. So once a, an object or shape or form is constructed, it's finally defined to stand out using a thick line. And that's basically the outline. Okay. So fairly straightforward stuff. So once you've completed the drawing and you firm it out, that's essentially the outline of the drawing. So the next type of line we're going to be talking about is what's called the construction line. So the construction line is basically a thin line and it's designed to be quite thin so that it makes it easy to raise. And the other thing too is to raise in such a way that your drawing sheet doesn't get dirty. But anyway, um, when it comes to um, developing or constructing any geometric form, and it's basically the um, construction line that's normally used. And this is about a tenth of um, the outline. So the line in category A. So the construction line is also used in other applications too. So when it comes to uh, assigning dimensions to uh, given forms or shapes, uh, projection of lines. So particularly when it comes to orthograph projections, leader lines, imagined lines for intersection and things like that then this is basically the line type that we normally use. So just to show an example of a typical application, so this is basically a construction line. So this is a projection from the given um, geometric views. And you use your construction line. Other than the head of the arrow for the dimension, the lines okay, connected to the arrow heads are basically quite thin. Okay, um, you can also use um, hidden lines to show um, hatch details, but I would typically say when it comes to hatching details, that's normally an intermediary or uh, the intersection between an outline and a construction line, so it's slightly thicker. Okay. So there we have it. So construction lines, leader lines, however you want to call it. Then the next type of line that we're going to be talking about is what's called uh, hidden detailing or hidden lines. Okay, so that's category C. So when we have a geometric form that has some form of internal features that hasn't been sectioned, then you normally use hidden details to depict the internal profile of a given form. This example, if you look at the plan view of this orthographic projection, you realize that there's a ball or a hole going through the cube. So since this particular view doesn't have a hidden uh, a cross section, you can represent the depth or the detail of the of the hole going through the solid object by using these dashed lines. So that's essentially what's called the hidden line or the hidden detail. So that is basically category C. The 
Now the next type of line is what you call the continuous thin zigzag line. So you can normally use this to denote a broken section for a long component that wouldn't necessarily fit on a typical drawing sheet. You can also use that to depict partial uh, sectional views. So there we have it. So I've just placed this diagram here just to give you some idea in terms of how this zigzag line can be used. So in this example, for instance, for the solid metal bar, because this particular drawing might be long, so let's say if it were to be a meter long and it can't fit on an A4 paper, then you can use this as a strategy to break that section to show, to scale it down onto the sheet and to depict the length in terms of how it's been broken so that that particular drawing can fit onto the sheet. So there you have it. So you've got different forms, okay, for that. So normally for circular profiles, this is how it will normally look. But for anything prismic, this is basically how you can use the zigzag line to show that discontinuity of its geometric form on a um, given drawing sheet. So let's look at category D. So category D is not necessarily a hidden detail. So we normally call this a chain line. So a chain line thing, and you normally use this to represent um, symmetry in geometric forms. So center lines, dating points, position, bearing, location. This is typically the line that will be used. So that is category A. So going back to Q, this is basically the center line, okay? Or the chain line or the thin chain line, if you want to call it that. So if you look at the drawing here, because of the position of the ball to the primary form, you realize that that's located at the center. Okay, but this is just basically depicting the datum of the center of the circle with respect to um, the cube form. Likewise for the given views down below, showing that symmetry of the given form. So this is basically category A. So the other type of line is basically um, similar to category A. So this is what we call the chain line and this is thick. So this is basically for um, defined surfaces that more or less have some form of special uh, requirement. So down the line, we'll go into detail relating to this particular type of line. We're going to look at category G. So category G, um, some people call it a squiggle. So let's call it a continuous squiggle line, okay? And again, this can be used in terms of um, presenting partial section of views for drawings, okay? Not necessarily if the drawing is axis symmetrical, okay? So if you look at this clip, I intentionally used this some time ago, so talking through one of the uh, work along tasks, whereby I've used it to show a partial section of a given component. And the last we'll, we will be using down the line will be category H, and this is basically a line form that represents cutting planes, okay? So if you wanted to look at a cross-sectional view of a given geometric form of interest, and this is basically the type of line that needs to be used to show the adjacent view in the other view in terms of what is the nature of the internal architecture of the given form, okay? So going back to our example, this is basically the cutting line or the cutting plane. So if we're looking at the cutting plane with respect to XX, this is essentially what we'll see. So this gives us a clear detailed view of the internal profile of the ball that runs through the cube. And there we have it.